Hey, hey, hey. Oh my gosh, you guys. I'm like still working on catching my breath. So I'm going to give it a minute. And I know Facebook is out um, grabbing you guys. So I am simulcasting in a couple different places using StreamYard. And I just got home from a run, which is what I'm going to talk about today. Um, yeah. So I'm going to give it a minute. I'm going to give it a minute. Um, let me know when you are on. Say hello. Say hello. Say hello. Okay. Hold on. Just want to see. No. Uh, I am still like working on understanding StreamYard. It like takes a minute, but <clears throat> if someone can just say hello and let me know that you can hear me. Um, I have a message I want to share today. And like I said, it was like, you guys, a lesson learned. Good morning, Lisa. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Just let me know you can hear me okay because I don't have my earbuds in. Okay. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Christine. So, you know, I think we could all agree um, that, you know, this year, 2020 has not been the best year of our lives. <laughs> um, if it has been for you, congratulations, but it definitely hasn't been for me. So, um, you know, I feel like this year has definitely been a roller coaster, a lot of lessons learned. Um, but I think actually today was like, okay, I'm going to try and like really make, I, I want to make sense here, but like, I have so many thoughts right now because of what just happened. So, um, you know, I lost a couple close relatives this year. Um, one unexpectedly, one was suffering with cancer just lost her a couple weeks ago. And then, you know, just recently we found out about, um, one of my really good friends, uh, let's just say their dad is, is not doing well. Okay. Didn't get the best news. Let me just, let me just say that without going into detail. And, and I've known this man for a really, really long time. So it's hitting us very hard. And then also on top of it, you know, you want to be there, you want to support, obviously your friend. So, you know, it's like you take everything from 2020, what we've gone through, um, all the chaos, all the, all the unknown, there's so much unknown. And I think that that's where I'm going with this is like, there's, there's so much unknown that it kind of, you don't know which way to turn or you, you almost like make things harder. And I'm relating this. It's like life and business. So if you don't know, I, I have a couple home-based businesses. If you're, if you're new to who I am, um, I'm a multipreneur. I have a, quite a few home-based businesses, which is why when we started homeschooling, um, I wanted to pull my hair out. It was one of the most difficult times in terms of just, we didn't know what to expect in March, right? And then I'm homeschooling, I got work, my husband's working out of the house, there's just a lot of chaos. So I run a couple of businesses and the lesson I learned today, I'm applying to my business because it's everything I've always taught to my audience, everything I've always said to my audience, and yet I wasn't applying it to myself in my, in my life until today. Until today, I went out, and I went for a run and I will tell you right now, I am not a runner. I have bad knees. I have a bone spur in my left foot. I, and it's painful. And I, I, you know, I haven't gone to the gym since, you know, Corona started. I haven't been back to my cycle bar. I haven't been back to my other classes and it's been really kind of difficult on me. Um, because I miss it, right? So you know what? When you 
when you can't go do what you want to do, you got to figure out something else, period. So I've been going outside, I've been taking walks, going for runs. Well, lately I've started realizing I've been getting sucked back into my work. And I'm like, you know what, Joel, like work will always be there. It will always be there. Go for the run, go out for the run. And me telling myself I'm not a runner, what I did it instead, and this is where the, 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 the whole lesson is learned, is I went out today and knowing I don't really like the run, I'm learning to lo- like to run, I should say, I'm learning to like to run, but I also find it difficult because of my foot and my knee. I said, you know what, I'm going out today and I'm not going to live in that story And I'm going to go for a run and I'm dedicating it to my friend's father. And you guys, I will tell you, I just ran almost four miles because I took the focus off me and put all of that energy and all that focus into what he is going through. And so I go like, holy shit, you guys, it was like a slap in the face of going, wait, I'm running, I'm running, I'm not stopping, I'm not stopping, I'm not tired, I'm wearing a sweatshirt in 80 degree weather, zipped up, I got my my stomach bands on, if you guys know, I wear my stomach bands and my arm bands, and I got my my music going, wait, you know why? Because I was consistent with the run, I didn't force the run, I didn't speed up. I didn't slow down. I stayed at a steady pace and I just went. I didn't think about me running. I didn't think about me like, you know what I'm saying? Like I wasn't thinking about me and I took the focus off me and I put it elsewhere and I ran before you knew it. I I usually, you know, you know, like if you go out, if you, so if you run, you understand what I'm saying. Like you have your path, you have your way, you know, like, as far as you've ever extended to where you, you know, you, you've gotten to, I went, you know, down this path and I'm like, okay, I'm feeling really good. I'm going to turn around. I'm going to keep going. Went back. Wait, what if I turned around again, turn around again, keep going. I kept running. I stopped twice. I stopped twice for about 20 seconds to just catch a breath. But then you know what? I kept going. I kept going before you knew it. It was like four miles, four miles in like 30 minutes. You guys, I, it was, it's about what it represents. That's, that's the thing. It's not about me going out for the run. I took the whole focus off the run and it was about what it represents. So why I share this is because this huge life lesson was about divorcing the heart because in our businesses, we're making everything too hard. We're making everything too difficult. And most of the time it's because we're focused on us. It's because we're focused on our own results. It's because we're not taking the focus off us and putting it elsewhere, putting that energy elsewhere and putting something that you feel is hard put a representation to it. Like I said, it was, I was shocked with myself because there was no preconceived notion. I w- I didn't go on that path. I didn't walk up to that path and look down that path and say, you know what? Like I, I'm, you know, I said, I looked and I said, you know what? I, I'm going to run. I'm going to run and I'm going to stay consistent and I'm going to stay at a steady pace. I'm not going to do what I normally do. I'm not going to, you know, hustle it, hustle my face off for this. I'm like, I'm just going to run and I'm not going to focus on the run. And bam, that's what happened. And I shocked myself. I know this sounds like totally minuscule and minute, but it's what it stood for. And it's a big deal to me knowing that I've never been able to do that. I've never been able to hold a consistent run, especially for four miles. I just, I haven't. Yes, I'd stop twice, but I haven't. And I just proved to myself that anytime you put your attention elsewhere, no matter how much you feel like you're struggling, no matter how much you feel like something is hard, if you just, I challenge you, 
go do something today. I'm not talking about climbing Mount Everest. Go do something today that has been a challenge for you and go put a meaning to it. That's what I'm trying to say is go put a meaning to it, right? Flipping the idea and notion of 2020 being hard and a difficult and a chaotic year for me, it's saying, okay, Julie, now let's put some meaning to this. What did we learn this year? What, are, what has been some of the good things about 2020, right? And how can I make that better? I can't change the world. I can't cure coronavirus. You know, I, I can't bring peace to everybody. All I could do is control what happens here and then control what happens out here, my actions. Control what's in here, control what's in here, and control my outside factors as much as I possibly can. Does that make sense? Are you guys hearing this? Um, I'll tell you, I have been, I'm a very ambitious entrepreneur. Ambition is good, but it can also be a default. And here's why. Because things aren't perfect enough. Things aren't going fast enough for you. I get that, right? I'm a perfectionist. I'm, I'm a recovering perfectionist. I'm, wor I'm working on that. I'm not, I'm not perfect. I'm not perfect. And I'm working on my <laughs> not being perfect. Um, I, I am having shifts in thoughts about my business and what I actually like, what that really looks like. And when you're solo, a solopreneur, that can be challenging, right? And that's why having a tribe is so key to bounce ideas off of, to be able to ask opinions. Um, and so the, this time right now for me, it's like, okay, Julie, where do you want to go? Like, where are you turning with your business? And it, I will tell you, it also, having those feelings can cause inaction. It can cause inaction because I don't, I'm not putting anything out there to understand what what is going to be reciprocated. Does that make sense? So let me give you an example. Like right now I'm sitting at, you know, uh, I really have two different, and you, if you're in business, you understand this. I really have two different avatars in my world. I have the avatar of the network marketers, online home-based business owners that want to build multiple income streams and they come to me for that. They want to know how to do it. That's an avatar. Over here, the other thing now that I'm wrestling with and thinking about is actually doing um, a high ticket program. I have a lot of experience, a lot of knowledge around online marketing and sales and systems. And I've downplayed my experience and I've downplayed my knowledge for far too long and I'm tired of it. And I just am stepping into my power now. I'm like owning it instead of shying away from it. And it has taken me a year and a half to get to this moment now to say, you know what? I can help a lot of women in their business, but you know what? This is at premium. This is premium prices. I've invested over $100,000 in my knowledge in coaching and mentorship in my business. I have a lot of knowledge around this. I am going to go out there and I'm going to put the most amazing program together and I'm going to make it simple because you know why I see a lot of women drowning in the noise. I see a lot of coaches that are struggling because they, they just want to serve their clients. They don't understand marketing and systems and sales. Neither should they, they should be focused in their zone of genius. I also see a lot of entrepreneurs and women that are lost that might have been on this journey and having success in their business, but now they're feeling so unaligned and so unhappy to the point of where they don't know where to go. I've been there. I've lived it. You guys, I can write a book about the last four years of my life. Um, and it would be a huge inspiration because you know why? I didn't quit. Through all the shit that was thrown at me, I did not quit. And so that's the point, right? And I sit here and I'm like making everything too hard. I'm making everything too hard. And then I go, well, Julie, what kind of entrepreneur are you? How are you going to teach these other women not to make things hard and make, you know, smart decisions and have a simple business if you're making it too hard? Again, another slap in the face. Just like I thought that run was hard. 
Are you kidding me? That run ain't hard. I just proved to myself. I just ran four miles straight. It's not hard. It was the story I was fucking telling myself that it was hard. It's not hard. We make shit harder. That's the moral of all this. And when you take the focus off of you and you look at like your story that you're living in, and then you see what is happening out there or, you know, God forbid to loved ones, it takes all of that away. It just takes all of it away. So I just wanted to come on here. I don't know. I hope you found some value of this. I just wanted to share a little bit about, you know, my journey, what, you know, just happened to me today, which I'm super excited. I'm like, how cool is that? Um, but like the lesson that I learned from it, because here's the thing, you know, and I hear this a lot with business owners. I failed at that. I failed. I'm a failure. I didn't finish. I'm a failure. I didn't run the whole four miles. I stopped and walked just because I stopped and walk. And I was telling myself as I was running, keep going, just keep going. Like, don't focus on your legs hurting, nothing. Like I kept shifting my mind, like just, just go, just go slow and steady, slow and steady, keep going, keep going. And so because I, I did that, I was able to get out of my own way. I was able to get out of my own mind. And like I said, put the focus somewhere else. So what I'm going to say to you is divorce the hard, challenge yourself, because I promise you what you think is hard on the other side of it, there's brilliance. Okay. It's brilliant. So as always, you guys be blessed. I hope you, I hope you capture this message today and truly, truly hear the words that I'm saying. Um, go out there. I challenge you to do something today that you can, you don't have to prove it to anybody. Just show yourself that you got this, that you can do it. Like I said, it doesn't have to be anything astronomical. <laughs> it could be something is doing your first Facebook Live. <laughs> Just show yourself. It, you're not going to die. It's okay. Nothing needs to be perfect. Take the pressure off. Because I promise you that at the end of the day, there's more important things out there than you, you worrying about about doing a Facebook Live. And I'm sharing that because I was scared about doing a Facebook Live for six months when I was be being told to do a Facebook Live and I didn't do a Facebook Live. And then I finally did a Facebook Live and I was like, oh my God, I got this. <laughs> this is easy, right? Take the pressure off. Just show yourself you can do it. All right, be blessed. I love you guys. Have a good day.